Feel free to check out my tea public after the video and support me on Patreon. Watch till the end of the video for more. This review was possible thanks to my wonderful patrons. If you'd like to show your support for the channel, then you can go do so on Patreon. Neon Genesis Evangelion aired on October 4th, 1995, directed by Hideaki Anno. To this day, it is celebrated as one of the most beloved and iconic anime ever made, along the likes of Mobile Suit Gundam and Dragon Ball Z in terms of popularity and merchandise sales. As I mentioned in my review on the anime itself, it's one that is very near and dear to my heart, so for more of my thoughts on that, go check it out. Though I will say that I totally forgot to mention how Evangelion was partially inspired by the works of Gary Anderson, though given how similar they are to the works of Tsuburaya, it's not that surprising. One thing I briefly talked about in my last video was the ending, and how some people have a bit of a distaste for it. This was because due to budgetary and censorship reasons, the original ending that Anno had in mind had to be rewritten. A similar thing happened with Space Runaway Idiom, where the ending had to be changed up a little due to things beyond the director's control. And much like Ideon, the true ending to Evangelion would come in the form of a 1997 feature film known as The End of Evangelion, which is widely considered to be one of the greatest animated films of all time. But is it though? I'll admit that I love this movie, but I'll go over some of my small problems with it later. The film is set after the events of episode 24, with the death of Tabris, or Kaoru, the last angel. Gendo Ikari turns against Sele, the organization which he answers to that has power over the United Nations. This leads Sele to use their power to launch an attack on NURB's headquarters, killing everyone. Pretty brutal stuff. While this is going on, Misato Katsuragi escorts Shinji to Unit 1 as Asuka is fighting Sele's forces in Unit 2, including mass-produced Eva units, which is easily one of the greatest fight scenes in anime, thanks to how beautifully executed the animation is with amazing shots that showcase outstanding framing and composition. It's very Shusuke Kaneko-esque, comparing it to the Gamera trilogy. Eventually, the MP Avas get the best of Asuka in Unit 2 and brutally tear her apart in what was perhaps the most uncomfortable scene that 14-year-old Titan Goji ever sat through. And it isn't long until Third Impact is initiated, in which humanity is reduced to nothing but Sunny D, as their souls transcend to a higher plane of existence where everyone truly feels at one with each other now that mankind has achieved what is essentially its true form, leaving the fate of the human race in the hands of a very vulnerable and emotional teenager who's seen some shit. So you have a movie where the fate of mankind rests in the hands of a giant godlike entity where major characters die in horrifying ways, there's Christian symbolism here and there, as well as scenes relating to the annihilation of the human race. So basically, the Ideon be invoked. The End of Evangelion has a very out there premise, and I think it complements the themes of the show extremely well. In my review of the show, I mentioned that learning to become a better person, human connection, helping others find peace are major core components to the show. And it's really nice to see the finale carry on those themes in the form of an incredibly operatic presentation. The movie is structured a lot like a symphony in a similar vein as 2001 A Space Odyssey or A Clockwork Orange due to how it's paced, shot, and animated. And it honestly makes it pretty unique, and the music by Shiro Sugisu only solidifies that. On top of the fact that this movie is very gorgeous to look at. You could honestly take any screenshot from this movie and it'd look great if it were hung on a wall. As for the characters, I feel like their arcs were executed really well and definitely unnerving at times. I'm always on edge when Asuka is on screen because the film knows how unsettling it is to see such strong people become so vulnerable. And I remember absolutely despising how Shinji was just utterly hopeless in the first half to the point of absolute frustration before I realized that was kind of the point. Also, the MP Avas are terrifying. I get chills every time I look at those sadistic, eyeless grins on their faces. Considering how much of a classic this movie has become amongst anime fans and film buffs alike, I'm gonna give the floor to someone else for now. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Yoko Iguchi and I'm an aspiring filmmaker living in New York City. Some of you may know me as one of the production assistants on Shin Godzilla. The End of Evangelion is a quintessential animation film to watch for any cinephile. It combines the visceral intensity of Japanese animation with the cerebral philosophical dialogue of French New Wave cinema. It's a great example of an artist pouring themselves into their work as this film is more so a 
visual representation of Hideaki Anno's psyche. Some may criticize Anno's style as being pretentious or full of itself, and I can't really blame them for thinking that, to be honest. This is the expression of an artist. Um, for better or worse, uh, that is depending on your view. This is how he chose to express himself, and it's completely merciless and unapologetic. In the very beginning, he thrusts you into this mysterious, lonely, violent, sexual, uncomfortable world without any warning or hesitation, and that's one of the things I love about Anno. He knows exactly who he is as an artist, and will not explain or apologize for his style. And that's honestly something to admire. The end of Evangelion has great importance to me, as it opened the doors to my filmmaking career. And, ever since I saw it back when I was 14 years old, I've tried many times to emulate it. The visual language on display, on screen, in the film is unlike anything else that I've ever seen, and is equally as meticulously crafted as any frame in Stanley Kubrick's works. In many of my films, I've tried to replicate Anno's style, and it's something that's become ingrained in my filmmaking process. But whenever I go out and shoot a film, I always ask myself, how would Spielberg shoot this? How would Kubrick, Scorsese, Fincher, Snyder? And of course, I always find myself asking, how would Anno shoot this? In conclusion, The End of Evangelion is not only a fantastic conclusion to the Neon Genesis Evangelion series, but is also one of the greatest works in cinema history. It's bold, big, thought-provoking, deeply emotional, and incredibly beautiful. All the ingredients you need for a masterpiece film. So basically, a lot of aspects of End of Evangelion are just incredible. Many can agree. But I have some small gripes with it. On one hand, End of Eva makes it very clear that it takes place after episode 24 of the show, but it doesn't really feel like that. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I don't know, I feel like there's some sort of disconnect here. But that's just me. I kind of prefer the TV ending as I think it feels a bit more natural and cohesive on a narrative standpoint. And while I love the characters and how their arcs concluded, it's a lot better if you have context of who these people are beforehand because you're not gonna know what the hell is going on even though this is a finale movie, but I have seen people praise it as if it were a standalone. Also, not once have I heard of credits appearing at the middle of a movie. I get it's Anno trying to be artsy-fartsy for the hell of it, and I guess he views End of Eva as two episodes put together, but I always thought it was a little odd having what's basically an intermission for a movie that's not even an hour and a half. You know, I can just imagine watching this movie for the first time in a theater and when the mid-movie credits pop up, you walk out thinking the movie is over when there's still a good 45 minutes left of it because you, you didn't know any better. Also, what the actual f*** is up with that masturbation scene? It just comes out of nowhere. Like, it pops up not even five minutes into the movie. Like, what is the significance here? I guess it's there to just... I don't know. Even though these are pretty much my main issues with the film, it's not enough to keep me from enjoying it. Again, I think The End of Evangelion is beautiful in terms of presentation and how it ties together everything the series has been building up to in a pretty epic way. Is it a masterpiece? Debatable. But has it aged beautifully in some areas? Totally. Even to this day, Evangelion is a series that is still fondly remembered and talked about. It's gotten to the point where filmmakers like Jordan Book Roberts, James Cameron, Steven Spielberg, Yoko Higuchi, and Michael Bay have all been inspired by Evangelion in one way or another. You can still see the essence of Evangelion bleed into the other works by either Hideaki Anno or Shinji Higuchi, even if that essence is a mishmash of everything that has come before. Even Robin Williams had a big hand in pre-production of the cancelled live-action Evangelion film. And as I mentioned in my last video, it was truly a product of its time, as the 90s was a decade where everything changed. Movies became more existential, music became a lot more expressive, and so forth. And Evangelion still stands the test of time as a beloved classic, and thanks to Netflix, the entire series including End of Ava and Death True 2, or Death Times True Squared, Death, uh, Death and Rebirth, and thanks to G-Kids, the series is also finally getting a Blu-ray release in North America. Also, there's been this debate as to whether the ADV English dub or the new English dub for Netflix is superior. To pretty much throw in my two cents into the argument, the ADV dub is a domestic translation of the show that was made to appeal to Western audiences, 
whereas the new one is a foreignized translation that's basically a literal translation of the show. And because of that, I prefer the new English dub, but I will always respect the ADV dub for what it did to Evangelion back then. Though that's probably easy for me to say. Well, you got what you wanted. And honestly, I was really happy to do this for y'all. Does this mean I'll also review the Rebuild movies or the manga at some point? Maybe another time. But I got another treat for you. Yoko Higuchi and I recorded our own commentary track for the end of Evangelion. As of now, it is only exclusive to my Patreon supporters who are subscribed to the $5 tier or above. But if that's a bit too much for you, then no need to worry, because there is a 9 minute super cut of our track that pretty much gets the gist of it for non-patrons. So hope you enjoy that. But that's not all. Did you know that this video was possible thanks to my wonderful patrons? If you like what you see, then definitely consider supporting me on Patreon, where for a single dollar, your name can appear at the end of every future upload. Other than that, you can also get early access to videos, exclusive content, commission video requests, and receive a t-shirt of your choice from my tea public, like this design based on Neon Genesis Evangelion. Once I reach enough patrons, I'll review The H-Man, The Secret of Intelligen, and The Human Vapor. So if that's something you like to see, then go support me on Patreon. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Titan Goji, wishing everyone a happy holidays, and next year, we're gonna start things off a bit cooler.